Hey, Matt. Hello. What's up? The sky. Good answer. I appreciate that. Here we are. Back again. Gamers 2 podcast for June 7th, 2019. This is weird. We're all reversal going on here. You were doing chapstick, so I figured I'd just take over and, oh, okay. and run with it. Got the lip burn going on from the chips. I think that's why I don't know. Something's giving me some mad heartburn. Probably the chips. My guess would be the chips. That'd be interesting. Them good old jalapeno chips. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah. As is normal. Games, news, uh, nerd news. But it's mostly games at this point. Now the E3 is right around the corner. It is upon us. It is uh, dreading it upon us. Mm -hmm. But leading up to E3, what have you been doing in the last seven days since we last met? Seven days. Whole lot of adulting, more or less. Um, no video games. Watching some some YouTubes when I get a chance. Not a lot of that anymore, which is sad. <laughs> um what else have I been doing? Oh, I did some suit shopping. That wasn't fun. Ooh, yeah. Nope. Not yeah. Uh, pro tip though, if you want a, a cheap quality suit, uh, Calvin Klein. Modern cut, obviously, because it's modern. <laughs> um, yeah, they're cheap. Hundred percent wool too. Good yeah. suits. Uh, there used to be a. Uh... Well, I mean, there's. I think it still exists. I just don't remember the name of it now. There's an online suit place. Uh, it's been in. I've heard it in podcasts mentioned. Send them measurements. They send you a suit. Yeah, I could see that. And then if you need to do alterations, send it back. They'll do alterations. Send it back to you. And can't remember what the name of it is though. But I know Lawrence has used it. Interesting. I can't imagine that. Like, I mean, in theory, I guess it'd work well if you if you have like a pretty standard build. I I could see that working really well. Yeah. I have... Um, I'm weird. Yeah, I'm also weirdly shaped. <laughs> and I have abnormalities like because I have like a, a slight scoliosis. And I went to get fitted for a suit at Men's Warehouse when we were going to do that. And the tailor like immediately is like, your, one of your shoulders is bigger than the other one. Ah, yeah. That's and right. I was like, yeah, I have, I have the, scoliosis. Uh, He's like, yeah, I can tell. The, the roasting tailor. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Roasting Taylor. <laughs> you got fucking scoliosis, don't you, man? Well, fuck you, too. Yeah. Uh, what else have I been doing? Housework. Nothing <laughs> exciting, apparently. Uh, hopefully, you got something exciting to, to share. Oh, I wa What did we... Oh, we watched the Kratos, Raising Kratos documentary. Ah, okay. I say we. I watched it because I was sick of waiting for Samantha to watch it with me. Right, and I've, already, and I've already watched it. It was really good. It I was. I really enjoyed I it. Enjoyed, yeah, it was good. I'm glad I didn't wait for her because I think a lot of it would have been lost on her. Like, oh, she would have appreciated she would the appreciate, performances, like, I think. The performances and like, the creativity of it, but the actual story of the development is something yeah. we are much closer to. Yeah, and like the process and everything. Like I think that would have been lost on her. So. And the problems and mm -hmm. i really enjoyed it i didn't realize that that was like a normal thing they did like the documentaries there was one for the last of us that it recommended me like there was a few there for like their first party releases that yeah. i didn't even realize they had, they had them um i've seen bits out of the last of us one but not the whole thing yeah i didn't i didn't watch it uh yeah that's that's about it that's about it. cake tasting tomorrow Ooh, get that cake yeah yeah. Hey, it's my favorite part of all weddings that I've never been involved in. Cake tasting. It's the only I, thing I look forward to eventually whenever that day comes is eating a bunch of food. See, like, I don't know. Like, I, I'm so underwhelmed with everything. Like, I the, I don't want to be doom and gloom about it. But the more yeah, but you're also, I deal with it, the you, least... You and I are also doom and gloom about a lot of things. Yeah, like, it's it's... The more I deal with it, the more I feel like it's so unnecessary and so gratuitous. Like, it just seems like a complete waste of time, money, resources. I 110% agree with you, which is why people do get married just at the courthouse, get the document, call it a day, and be done with it. Yeah. And at the same time, 90% of the time, it's not for us. 
that's that's the only reason why I don't make a bigger deal out of it is because it's not for me, obviously. Um, but if just, it was, we're there to complete the puzzle. Yeah, theoretically, if I was more in control, I would have done the courthouse wedding, but then like thrown a party, yeah, a sizable like, let's, party. Let's just get the courthouse wedding done. Get me one witness on each side. We get this done. We call it a day. We're there in and out an hour. And then we'll just have a giant party reception with everybody else. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because you could spend like a fraction of the amount of money and do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. If you just took all the money that you were going to use at the wedding and just throw it all into a reception party. Yeah. It'd be different off. Yeah. Then you don't all have to be in suits. You can just. Mm-hmm. So that's, a, that's where I'm at in life but right now. So. All understandable. Yeah. You'll be happy. You'll be happy when it's over. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and not much longer. And it will be over. Three months, I think. Two months. Three months. September. Yeah, so three months. Three months. Uh, yeah, so what have you been up to? Not uh, doing anything with a wedding. <laughs> uh, enjoying life alone. And You have your cat. Yeah, but he's not like interrupting me from playing games. Uh, he tries to. Sure, though? To be fair, he say. tries to. He tries to sit on the lap and like accidentally rest his head on the control button. Which in certain games will fuck the entire thing up mm-hmm. has happened, uh, but I mean, other he doesn't like he he needs my attention, but he's his attention is just like I just want to hang out, yeah. so he'll just sit on my lap. It's not like listen, we need to go pick out paint colors. Like, it's like no, a, I'm gonna, it's I'm gonna a, do that myself. You don't need to come with me. I'm not gonna carry you into Lowe's. <laughs> what do you, you think? When you start taking your cat around, when you make decisions, I'll start to worry. <laughs> if I start taking my cat around with me, I would probably have a lot more females. That's true. So maybe that's something to look into. I think every female I know loves him. So like, you're just that I just not... know. They all love him. Because who doesn't love him? Look at look at that thing wherever he went. You're not utilizing your assets here. You need to be... I just refuse to start an Instagram account for a cat. I refuse. I'm not saying that, but you need to... <laughs> you should make your Instagram account, like, about... I, I cat, don't... Like, I don't, I refuse an Instagram account. Do it... You know, whatever. It could be anything. <laughs> Snapchat. Just, like... Nothing but him. Pose him. Take him outside. Pose him in weird situations yeah, where it seems him like you guys are just pose him, but <laughs> a little cat outfit. Yeah, that's what I should do. A little tutu. Oh no! What? No. Maybe a top hat. No, he would definitely be. Uh, what's his name from the famous painting? Pitchfork Holden. Oh, American uh, Heritage. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't remember who did the painting. No, name of it's American Heritage. Anyway, that's more than I know about it. So. Moving on. I've <laughs> uh, been playing a lot of the normals, a lot of Pokemon Go. Some Division 2. More FM. A lot of Risk of Rain. Played some Bomber Crew. Played some Heroes of the Storm. Played some Overwatch. Played some Mario Kart. I dabbled around. around the bush. Played some MLB The Show. Played... Pokemon the trading card game online because I'm a fucking sellout and a loser. Played Magic the Arena. Just reaching my tendrils into everything. A little bit of, a little touch it over there, touch it over there. It's giving me agita just thinking about all that. Yeah. Like, ugh. A lot of it's just, you know, just quick touches. Like, ooh, play this for an hour. Not even. Get my dailies done. Close. Move on. Go to something else. Not in the same routine you've heard me be on before. Log in, do this, stop. Log in, do this, stop. Log in, do this, stop. Yeah. We're not that scientific yet. Not that. As we don't need to be. Everything I can accomplish usually decently quick. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, uh, yeah, a lot of that. Bomber Crew actually uh, is a lot of fun. I've only played like three missions. But it's it's definitely interesting. Fun. Yes. Nerve-wracking. Yes. It's a fun time. Okay. It's cool. I'll, I'll try to show you at some point. It probably won't be tonight, but it's, uh, yeah, you have like a, you're a, a bomber crew <laughs> and you have to like manage the plane. So you zoom in and you can like move gunners around, move things around. If you have an engineer or something breaks, you have to have him repair it. So you're doing a lot of crew so management while you're also not dealing. playing as the crew. You're managing the crew. Right, you're not a crew member. Okay. You're telling the crew what to do. Ah. And having to keep the plane on navigational tracks. 
while also shooting down fighters and then bomb the target or whatever the mission is. And sometimes it gets real hectic and you're like, ah, I don't know. And that's what happened to me. I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm just like panic moving people around and trying to do things. For some reason I thought it was like um, that submarine game where you played as a crew member and you were running around trying to do different stuff. Oh, in the plane. Uh, uh, not 20,000 leagues. I don't remember now. Yeah. Something deep, deep sea. I don't. Doesn't matter. You you get to hold the rose and use it as a weapon. Yeah. And Black Mark Twain's in there somewhere. (laughs) That is a reference not many will get. Um, Yeah. So I've been doing a lot of that. Haven't read read anything. Uh, Actually, I tried starting reading a different book. Because that one just didn't catch with me. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to read a different one. We'll see if that one catches with me. If that one doesn't catch with me, I still have a hardcover that's in my nightstand that I haven't read yet. So maybe that'll be the solution. It's just kind of been like, I've, I don't know, I've just been looking for something to read. But then at the same time, I'm just like, I have way too many other things going on to read right now. Hence by my 13 games or whatever that I mentioned right before that. Uh, uh, and then still, so, you know, watching the sports. Sports world. Sports. Watching them. And in the last week and a half, has been nothing but trying to keep up roughly on everything E3 related and the video game sphere as a whole. And I think I did pretty good. Yeah. It's been a bit of a mess. A lot of random stuff. Well, because the moment you think you have your grip on one thing. Something else is like, ooh, what about us? And it's like, ah, you bastards. Which is evidenced by both the Pokemon Direct this week and Proyek Stadia having their first Stadia Connecto. I don't know, Connect and Connecto, that doesn't make sense. (laughs) Connect, just Stadia Connect. Interesting they're calling them the Connects. I don't know. I don't know. I I figured they would call it Cast because Google loves Cast as a Mm -hmm. thing. They cast everything. They have a Chromecast and... True. Yada yada, and in a Stadia cast. Yeah, but then could be they could say connect, and it'll be a play on like we're connecting all of you together through the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. I, of, I, I, just thinking about it. I'm trying to think of like a couple of the really. Good comments I remember from the Stadia live stream. There was two specifically that were like hilarious when they happened. Oh, what were they? Everyone kept calling Stadia uh, Gadia, like gay. Like gay. oh, it was Gay Pride Month. Yeah, I assume that's why they were doing it <laughs> and not slandering Stadia, uh, as is not allowed in Soviet Russia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we, and we watched episode uh, two of Chernobyl. Oh yeah, yeah. Moving That's right good. along. So yeah, that it, show it's, is it's... blatantly meant to be binged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not meant to be watched over the yeah. course of six weeks or whatever that yeah. we're going to watch it over. Uh, because there's qu- things that are answered immediately in the second episode that, like, I was I googled from the first episode. Yeah. Because I'm like, why would that matter? Like, they don't tell you what that yeah, means. And, and then they immediately tell you in the beginning of the first episode, or as, second episode. As we're watching during episode one, and Matt and I are like, maybe that's what it is, or that's what it is. Then we he looked it up and stuff, and then we, yeah, not even ten minutes into episode two, and they're yeah. just like, by the way, in case you're curious, this is what that meant. You're yeah. Like, oh, all right, well, <laughs> oh. shit. <laughs> and obviously where I left off in the second episode was somewhat of a cliffhanger. I don't know what happened to Chernobyl. <laughs> Spoilers, bro. Come on, bro. What's an exclusion zone? <laughs> Alrighty. While Matt cleans his computer, I shall pull up the document on my cell phone. Oh, is that not working? It's got 5% battery, but the cord that's plugged into it isn't charging it. Uh, cause it might not be a Samsung fast charge. Yada yada. Now I got it. Cause I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna pass the tablet back and forth the entire time. Oh, cause we're so far apart from each other. It's... Yeah. yeah, but I can't say, hey, did you see this thing? And then just do this and then go back to. <laughs> we're all good. I got this. All right. Besides, Matt, 
E3 is right around the corner where a bunch of new games are going to get announced. And probably some of them might get, you know, Ninja released or whatever they stupidly fucking called that. Stealth oh. drop? Stealth release? Stealth releasing. It was some, I thought it was something drop. I thought you were... Stealth drop? Ninja drop? It's something dumb. I fucking I'll look hate it, up. it. I'll look it up as you tell me what new releases are going to happen. <laughs> oh, good, oh, good, good. Thank you. The Assassin's Creed... Not even going to happen. These have happened, Matt. I don't tell you the future. I tell you the present. And I guess technically the past because of that. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey DLC is out now. I believe episode two. Yeah, it's still happening. Effie for PS4. Kotodama, The Seven Mysteries of Fujisawa for the PS4 and Switch. Now, see, you had to look down at your tally. You, you know, I can't. Well, that's <laughs> just a weird name. Legend of the Tetrarchs, PS4, Xbox, and Switch. Perchang for the Switch. Persona Q2 for the 3DS. Sudden Strike 4 for the PS4, Xbox, and PC. Elder Scrolls Online elsewhere. I thought that came out. All right. It's out now. Uh, Super Scalamania for the PS4. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2. PS4. Will A Wonderful wor- Wonderful World. PS4 and Switch. Warhammer Chaos Bane. PS4, Xbox, and PC. Neon Junctions. PS4, Xbox, and Switch. Hue for the Switch. Journey makes its way to PC. Moto GP 19 for the PS4, Xbox, and Switch. Phantom Doctrine for the Switch. Slay the Spire goes to Switch. Octopath Traveler comes to PC. Party Golf goes to Xbox. Refunct for PS4, Xbox, and Switch. Super Blood Hockey for PS4 and Xbox. And then I warned everybody for E3 Bomb Drops. Because I couldn't remember, once again, what they were actually called. Yeah, I couldn't get a decisive I think either. it's Stealth Drops. That would make sense, I guess. Because it, I never agreed with it being Stealth, because they usually tell you in the conference, mm-hmm. and it's out now. And people are like, oh, they Stealth Dropped it. You're like, no, they just fucking yelled it from a mountaintop that it's out. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Ignore my... I gotta stop doing that accent. <laughs> Chernobyl doesn't help. Watching Chernobyl beforehand and then having to talk about Stadia later doesn't help me any. Yeah, a lot of games. Lot of games. Yeah, a lot of little games there. A lot of little 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 kit. Hold on, I will tell you if you are starting or I'm starting. What number did I make this thing over here? Da, 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 da. I just got a specific article in mind. There's only it only makes sense if I do it. I'll take number one. Pokemon's five. That's why. Oh, I'll say I'll I'll take I'll head up the Pokemon one. That works out because I watched the Stadia thing. So right, and I also wrote the Pokemon one. And I wrote as you saw as you were quick editing. A lot of my stuff is just quick jabs because I don't yeah. write full sentences. I'm just mm-hmm. like I'm I'm writing index cards. And you're writing a teleprompter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's just that's it's just our different styles of writing, and it's also because I just ramble forever, and I don't actually start the first fucking topic like I was supposed to. So number one, oh god, I chose this one. Shenmue three has been delayed again till November nineteenth. It says delayed again, but I don't remember what the first release date was supposed to be. I think it's been delayed. I think it's the third or fourth time now. Oh, that makes sense. It's also not coming out on November 19th, in case you guys are actually curious. The creator and director, Yu Suzuki, said, quote, The game simply needs a little more refinement before being truly finished. End quote. There was also a Shenmue 3 related rumor going on around the game could are going around that the game could be coming to Xbox One, which would make sense if it was coming out still in 2019. The rumor began because of a pre-order website for Shenmue that had an Xbox logo in the source code. Publisher Deep Silver was quick to deny the existence of an Xbox One version. Interesting. Also, Deep Silver, which means it's probably going to the Epic Game Store. Oh yeah, that's probably true. Did they? It's yeah. They announced it for PC too, right? I think so. But my guess is that it's going to go to. That, regardless of where it goes, I don't know if anybody's going to play the thing except was- for. A thousand people. Yeah. I was curious if maybe, like, Deep Silver denied it, but I wonder if it's a part of... Well, that wouldn't really make sense. 
I was going to say, I wonder if it's like, if it's something that's for whatever reason inside the Microsoft conference, but like that wouldn't make sense with PlayStation's relationship. No. And if they were going to make a deal, if they, and I'm just speaking because it's Deep Silver, who's owned by Take Two, who's been moving a bunch of their stuff to Epic Games. Yeah. Uh, they also wouldn't say that an Xbox One existed one because if they did make that deal with Epic Games, Xbox Xbox usually takes a year exclusivity anyway. Yeah. So. Number two, uh, Google had their Stadia Connect live stream. It was pretty straightforward and short as far as live streams go, but let us take a look at the details. Uh, First off, they started with Boulder's Gate 3, just right off the bat, that teaser that we watched. Yeah, where Cthulhu shows up. Yeah. Uh, it was announced, confirming rumors from last week that it, it existed that we actually didn't even mention in the podcast because we neither of us care about that game. So sorry. <laughs> did we not mention it in the podcast? I thought we did. I don't think we did. Maybe we mentioned it to each other and then we said, "Do we care?" And we said, "No." And then we that, that's that's what I think happened. Yeah. Uh, the other games that will be available at launch are Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Big Guilt, Don't Know It, Get Packed, uh, Looks Fun. The Division 2. Pretty cool. Um, Destiny 2 Shadowkeep was announced. Uh, and I'm assuming that'll be available at launch too. Uh, of Stadia. Because it comes out on the... Whatever. We'll, uh, we'll cover that separately though. Um, and into the technical details. So. Google is claiming that with a 35 megabits connection... I'm assuming they mean stable at 35 megabits. They will be able to stream 4K, 60 frames per second, HDR, 5.1 surround sound. At 10 megabits per second, uh, stable, you'll be able to do 720p, 60 frames per second with stereo audio. That's what they're claiming. Okay. Okay. That I mean, was, I mean, do you, do you want me to yell bullshit? Because like, I want to. I also want to, but, but I guess. Have you bought it yet? No. Okay, that's uh, all. That's all. I'm just curious. This there's the Stadia. Does, go ahead. Does the yes I bought it turn lower in this in this statement as I ask it after every bullet point? <laughs> <laughs> no, after I heard this, I hadn't bought it. But then two things later, when I heard that, I bought it. No. Um, the general. Th- like it seemed, my general reaction to the whole pre- thing, the presentation, presentation wise, it was done well. Content wise, and what the service and everything actually is, was very underwhelming for me when I watched it. it it's the I think the problem with the the content slash service thing is going to be a lot of show me, don't tell me. Yeah, and that and that's like it's they can say numbers all day, mm-hmm. but until they actually yeah do it mm-hmm. in a not controlled by them environment no one's gonna believe it yeah i'll, I'll finish going through this and i'll we'll continue talking about it because i i have as you probably do other thoughts on it but um they also showed the stadia controller which um it it is what you'd expect it to look like uh it's has a couple key features which uh, is a capture button and a google assistant button oh god that second one scares the hell out of me um running through the division raid and ding how You'll... can I help you? Fucking shoot the thing <laughs> over there! I'm sorry. I don't understand that direction. I said heal me! <laughs> what if you could be like, revive me? Oh, um, yeah, and it just starts dropping equipment because somehow Google... Yeah, no. What if Google Assistant in Division 2 is an AI character that you can recruit to play missions with? That actually does the drone thing that they showed off and never In actually... Division 1? Yeah, that never actually... You can have your it. friend connect on a tablet and fire from a drone if you need help during a mission. That was such a cool idea. Not yeah. realistic, but it was cool. It was. Um, to make use of Stadia... Uh, okay, uh, let me start over. You'll be <laughs> able to use uh, Stadia on a Chromecast Ultra, uh, the Chrome browser, or the Stadia app on Pixel 3. They just said Pixel 3. They didn't specify. I'm going to hope I'm included in that just for funsies. I think I think that will be the case. That seems to be how Google rolls with their we'll find out. cell phones. Um, they showed a quick clip of a Stream Connect feature. Uh, there wasn't any details on it, uh, but it looks like you'll be able to link multiple live streams together um, with YouTube, I'm assuming. I mean, they have multicasting, so I assume that's what yeah. they're talking about. Yeah, they just seem to like... they. 
They had a, a little asterisk and it said stream connect feature. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? It's also because they're killing YouTube gaming, but um, that's a that's a different Google problem. Yeah. Uh, there'll be two tiers of service. There'll be Stadia Base, uh, which this will be free, but you'll have to purchase the games separately. Like you'll have to buy all the oh, games okay. individually. All right. That makes sense. Uh, the base will allow you to stream up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. Um. Which is just fine. Yep. If it works. Yeah. Uh, Stadia Pro will be nine ninety nine. Not Stadia Comrade. <laughs> Stadia Comrade. Uh, <laughs> Stadia Pro will be ten dollars a month, and it'll have some sort of library availability. Uh, the website says, "quote Stadia Pro will include free content as well as discounts on titles you buy." The first free title is Destiny Two, and it comes with the base game. All previous add-ons and the upcoming Shadow Keep expansion and the annual pass. End quote. Oh, okay. I mean, that's a good deal. Their library is the question. Yeah, but they're combining what EA and we presume Ubisoft and Microsoft are already doing, and then saying the library is an extra feature. Like, yeah, you don't need to use it. Mm-hmm. But if you want to just pay ten bucks and not even don't don't buy the console. Just play in your browser, and you're like, if it all works, that's pretty good. Um, for launch, there's a bundle called the Stadia Founders Edition. Uh, <laughs> it'll include a Chromecast Ultra, a limited edition Night Blue Stadia controller, three months of service, three months of a friend pass, which I'm assuming is you know service. Three for months for your friend. I don't want you just gonna call it that. And quote dibs on selecting a Stadia name, uh, which I don't. They kind of. I was like, I guess that's a feature. Well, my um, guess would be they're saying your online name, and because if you do the special one, you get the pre-order access. Yeah, so you can make your name something. You could, you could just reserve your name now. Same way that they were doing that dumb shit with Harry Potter that you could reserve your Pokemon Go name mm-hmm. in Harry Potter early. Yeah. Um, which really only matters for streamers. The bundle will set you back $130. Not bad. Uh, controllers. If you, if you don't already have a controller or a Chromecast Ultra or those yeah. other things. I mean, for what you get, it's a really good deal. I mean, the Ultras alone are what? 60 bucks, I think, right? Yep. Um, so there's half the cost. The controller 70 So there's the, entire, there's the entire cost. Um, the controllers are $70 by themselves. They're available in three colors. Just 70, black. $70, though, for a controller. Yeah, that seems a little tone deaf. Yeah, um, unless they're unless they're Nintendo. But continue. They didn't go like you. They literally just showed you the controller and said it had a capture button and a Google Assistant. So like you, we literally know nothing else about it. Yeah, so it's the Switch controller with a Google Assistant. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it could have something going for it. Like it might have some fucking mammoth battery in it or something like that. But I mean, maybe, maybe it. The fucking phones home constantly because you have Google Assistant plugged into the damn thing. It doesn't just talk to your thing. It talks all the way back to Google headquarters to figure out how long you've been playing these games. Uh, that how was inter- the f- the big thing is like it connects directly to Google servers. It doesn't. How interacted is it? Are your hands with this current form of media? Mm-hmm. Oh, it, we see you've put down the controller because we don't notice your hand heat on the sensors that we didn't tell you about in the controller. Therefore, we will send you ads at this time. <laughs> Fuck uh, off. <laughs> so the now, three. Now I've gone way off the deep end. I went tinfoil hat. My bad. The three controller colors are just black, clearly white. Wait and a second. <laughs> wasabi. <laughs> just black. That's it. It's just black. Yeah. <laughs> I like clearly white only because I feel like. That came up in a boardroom where somebody had an argument about it. Yeah. They're like, what color is that? And they're like, it's white. Like, it looks like an off-white. And they're just, or it's like clearly a pink or white. And somebody just screamed, it's clearly <laughs> white. And they went, that's it. <laughs> Call it that. Uh, and then wasabi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody was just sitting around with some wasabi peas. And I was like, yeah, wasabi. Fucking, it's green. Move on. Uh, it'll be available in 14 countries at launch. Do you care about which 14 countries? No, because I'm okay. assuming the U.S. is one. Yeah, it is. That's all I'm concerned with. Um, yeah, so that's that's Stadia. So thoughts on Stadia? I don't think it's for us. I don't think it's for us. That being said, I will try it. I think it's for 
cities. It's definitely for cities, but I also think it's not for people who have full gaming rigs. And yeah, full gaming rigs. Hey, or hey, you don't need to fucking lambast point arm my entire yeah seven foot well, desk, all right. I have the same issue. I mean, well, now you do. Uh, now you've joined the IKEA army. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's for like there's a couple people I can think of off the top of my head who are. You know, interested in video games, like playing them, but aren't willing to... Don't dump the money on the hardware. Yeah, don't want to either spend the money on the hardware or are, live a lifestyle that's not conducive to them owning personal possessions. Like, they travel too much or yeah. whatever the case. And it's a big thing, too, when it always... Whenever somebody's like, man, I, I would love to get into gaming, but always the biggest barrier entry is the cost. Oh, yeah. Hands down. And if Google's able to remove that and still perform well, that's pretty huge. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Do I think it'll fail? Probably. I honestly think it's a 50% chance of success rate uh, because they it's Google. And you don't... Th- I mean, Google, you would think, does not fail it much mm-hmm. and will throw money at it till it's dead to They're, try to keep it alive. I appreciate Google's ability. Like, they, they will shit or get off the pot. Like, if they want to commit to something, they're they fucking to. commit. But if, they're, if they... Like, if something's a year or two in, which is really not enough development time if something's like a year or two in and they they don't like it they'll just be like ah, that's it get it out of here yeah so which is, that's the part where i say it, it's 50 percent. yeah they could hit a home run after if after even if even if they hit a rough launch everybody's expecting a rough launch so you hit a rough launch you hit you hit target mm-hmm. you have a great launch and all of us are going to be going ooh, and then I, you hit a year in and you're still trucking we're all going. Mm-hmm. What's Google going to do for their E3 press conference next year? Huh. I think the key is going to be... Um, I think it's going to come down to how quickly they can get the Stadia app on other devices and make it work well. I think, because, it's, I think it's a mix between that and their library it needs to be massive. Well, even even not even... like That's, yeah, for sure. But because, like, because if you don't give me a reason to go mm-hmm. there... Still, still $130 is... A, is might be too much for someone who's not sure. Right, but it's a third of the cost of a console. Yes. and But if they can get the app working and literally you can walk up and, and buy a $70 controller and be good to go. Do, do, is it confirmed you need that controller? I think you do because the, the, the gimmick was the controller, the controller itself, it connects directly to Google servers. And that's okay. how they deal with latency. Okay, so yeah, so if you need the controller, then you could be looking at a at a. Th- there's the kick though. You could still be looking at a hundred thirty dollar barrier to entry if you buy if you want to play a sixty dollar game. Yeah. You buy the sixty dollar game to pay the free service, and you pay for the seventy dollar controller. You're still at the same cost if you just bought the starter pack. True. So True. and that starter pack might not be around the That's... entire time. They'll just have it introed for three the first three months of its existence, and then go to a starter bundle, but that won't be as perkful as that one. Yeah, that could be the case. Same way that we see, you know, uh, Xboxes launch with Madden, and then they do have a version that just doesn't have Madden in it. Like, there's ones that have games and ones that don't. You know, there's, there's starter variety. It'll be interesting uh, to see how it plays out because it's it's already you can already tell that there's. I don't want to say that because that's kind of too definitive, but like from the comments from the live stream. And my reaction, our reaction, like, and company, gaming companies' reactions to it. Like, everyone who's already in the market, entrenched in the market, seems to be doubling down on what they're already entrenched in and say, get the fuck out, Google. Yeah, well, that's that. We bring that up later as well. Or we will bring that up later as well. But it, it is one of the scariest things where they need to double down because if this works, they're fucked. Yeah, that's but very true. But if this doesn't work, then they're fine. But it it is almost a, we need to make sure this doesn't work. It's the oil company. We need to make sure electric cars don't become a thing. Yeah. that's It's really that simple. Where this would be great. Electric cars as the, uh, you know, as the norm would be great. But money and power can stop any of that. Going to number three. Unless you had something else. No, we'll okay. save it for later on number three 
Bungie held their live stream showing Destiny 2 Shadowkeep and the changes that are coming to Destiny 2. Shadowkeep will be out on September 17th. The expansion will focus on the moon and the character Iris Morn, Iris Morn, Iris Morn, will be prominent. More details will be released leading up to the launch. Dude, Max, lo- I love you, bud, but you don't play Destiny. <laughs> Though to be fair, you probably have the same thoughts I do. It's like this is shit. Here, come up, come up in the chair. Come on, get in the throne, comrade. There you go. Now come sit back over here with me. Relax. Cross save is coming to the Destiny 2. All platforms will support the feature, and early rumors suggest that Sony wasn't on board initially, but that must have changed. Must have. Must have. Bastards. <laughs> so, the fun part about... But they uh, also said they also said cross-save, not cross-platform. So Yeah. The, the early rumors was like, oh, cross-save for Xbox, PC, and I think Stadia was even in there. But... No Sony. No, no, no mention of PS4. Um, but the funny thing about the live stream was it wasn't uh, the 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 talking and stuff like wasn't uh, scripted and it wasn't like teleprompter or anything like that. They just had like a list of key stuff that they had to hit on. Ah, the same way I read the doc. Yeah, so it was really it was somewhat awkward, but they were like saying things that clearly. People would not have allowed them to say if they had planned it out. Right. Like, uh, what's the guy's name who does the raids? I want to say it's like Kevin Smith, but it's not. Luke Smith? Maybe. Uh, um, he made an epic joke. Oh, I'll wait until we get to the Steam part, I guess. But he, um, the I'll, other thing was the the cross save feature. They were like, they were like, and the PS4. He's like, those rumors are not true. That you could like, it was. They were like acknowledging all the shit they had leaked. It was kind of interesting. So Destiny Two is getting a free to play version called Destiny Two New Light. New Light will include all the content from Year One, including multiplayer for free on PS4, Xbox One, and the PC. Cool move. Interesting. Interesting, but it's also a. Uh... Every every time a game like that runs into a, we're gonna dump a lot of content for free. You're wondering, what are your what are your numbers looking like that you need to do this? There's all there's always a yeah a balancing game of like, are your current numbers low? So you need to convince people to convince their friends passively to bring them on. You know what's the what's the meaning? Uh, as we mentioned earlier, Destiny Two in its complete form will be available on Google Stadia, Bungie. <laughs> Bungie also announced that Destiny on PC will be migrating from Activision Blizzard's Battle.net to Steam. Players who have the game on Battle.net will be able to move their Destiny 2 accounts to Steam closer to the launch of Shadow Keep. Go ahead, Matt. Drop the shit bomb. Um, was there a shit bomb? I don't know. You said something about Epic, and I'll hold on for the Steam oh, yeah, part. Yeah. Uh, Luke Smith, whatever the guy's name is, made a really funny joke leading up to them actually announcing this. And he's like, you know, we've, we, he's like, with us being a, a independent publisher now, you could say that we need an epic partner. And, and then he went, Steam. <laughs> yeah, and then they're like, Steam. I was like, oh, that was The cool. amount of shade that is just like pedally being thrown around by a bunch of developers and publishers is yeah. rather entertaining, actually. I didn't realize that afterwards until someone broke it down on reddit but it's like it's kind of i don't i don't know obviously we don't know what happened but from a certain point of view the whole live stream was like a middle finger to activision oh no i we've talked about this when it happened and with a bunch of people and i commented on tweets that i saw and stuff like that Mm -hmm. there was a tweet that came out from one of the bungee guys and it was something dealing with Shadow Keep, and it was talking about like our first title, yeah, and stuff like that. And I was like, if you guys wanted to give Activision the middle finger, just walk out on stage and say, "Go fuck yourself," because that's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And everybody in the a lot of pundits that I saw that were like liking the tweet and stuff, I'm pretty sure are coming from a spot of like, "Yeah, power to you guys!" Like you're being strong and independent. You don't need no man. And at the same time, I'm like, no, you told the man to go fuck himself. That's how all this reads to me. Not 
in a like yeah. it's good for you, but at the same time, it's, it's just like you don't bite the hand it. that. I feel like it's a bad move, though. It's it's not even don't bite the hand that feeds you. It's burn the bridge that got you there. Yeah. So it doesn't we'll, like uh, I it, get there's over a little overzealous right now. Like you know they're feeling their, the, their big kick comes to whenever Destiny Three is supposed to happen. That's when they I think will actually be tested as an independent. None of this DLC shit matters. Hence the part where Shadowkeep is going backwards mm-hmm. to D one stuff. Like they when they actually go to make D three and potentially run into all the giant problems of we're going to new consoles and we need to keep just delaying this game because we're trying to get stuff done, yada, yada, yada. They will potentially feel the public's ire for the yeah. first time directly because they don't have Activision to play Black Sheep. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I think we'll see it on this expansion because they made some pretty, they said some pretty like fast and loose stuff. I don't want to say fast and loose. I, I but think- like, they're like we're doubling down on multiplayer. This is all, like there's like yeah. everything's gonna be, and that was like why they went free to play is so that like all the multiplayer from year one is also free to play. So like you know if you want to play Crucible with your friends, you can. Blah blah blah. I'm like oh great. Like here we go, fucking yeah. multiplayer. Like and there's there's a lot to be said about that too. And what I think is potentially about to happen with Halo, and they might be trying to read into that a little bit and get ahead of it, but. I think you'll see some of it probably with this expansion, but more, mostly from the naysayers like me. And you won't see their actual passion, their passionate fans get pissy until D3 starts having its problems. That it might not have any, but I'm 100% assuming it will. So we'll see. We shall see. We shall see. Okay. Uh, many say that E3 is a sinking ship. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised at the amount of leaks this year. Uh, it would also seem that Amazon is the new Canadian Walmart, which we'll see in a couple minutes. Uh, we've thrown together all the leaks this week into one lovely place. So let's jump into the holes in the boat. Um, Watch Dogs Legion was leaked, thanks to Amazon UK. <laughs> Before you continue, I want to discuss the jumping into the holes in the boat <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> I don't know if that really is a good idea, <laughs> but continue. Plug the holes. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Plug them with your face. Dive head first. Uh, Ubisoft said, fuck it, and confirmed it shortly <laughs> after with a tease on Twitter. I like that Ubisoft's like, fuck it. I mean, Bethesda said, fuck it last year yeah. after uh, Rage 2 got blown out. There's like, ah, fuck it, it's real. Yeah. Hence our sweet Canadian controller. <laughs> uh, what we know is that it'll take place in London and be post-Brexit. Uh, the pro- I, I like that that's a, a an identifier. Line. Yeah, right. <laughs> all, um, all the EU's just like... <laughs> isn't it not passed, though, at the same time? Aren't they still fighting? They're still, they're, yeah, they're still... Isn't Theresa May supposed She's to just get, stepped like, down. Yeah, as I say, she's getting ripped for this. Yeah, she just stepped down. Um, So that means anyway, elections. Yeah, yeah, let's not even go there. We got somebody for you guys. Anyway, continue. <laughs> um... <laughs> I saw a really funny... Oh, I don't want to No, go don't it. do it. Uh, the, <laughs> the product description from Amazon had an interesting gimmick. Uh, quote, play as anyone. Every individual you meet in the open world has a full set of animations, voiceover, character traits, and visuals that are generated and guided by gameplay systems. End quote. So two things. Yes. Uh, specifically about... I'm going to stop you probably oh, after nice. every one of these bullets. Nice roughly. Sweat, sweater. Right? I do like it. It's good, good cut. You can find this at uh, Makes Rooster Teeth. Jacked, you can actually. find this at roosterteeth.com slash store. <laughs> uh, it's a funhouse lightweight navy blue hoodie. Ooh. I have an issue finding lightweight hoodies. They're like I feel like they're impossible. You to should find. try this on. I, I will at some because point. Because this is like this is a lightweight hoodie. This is way better. Yeah. It's and it this, looks I, like it's like almost like t shirt material. R- yeah, it's a little it's a little bit thicker than that. It's nice and soft. It fits I think it fits me pretty well. And not to toot my own horn. But, uh, you know, you get a lot of problems with sometimes lightweight hoodies don't necessarily look good on us slightly uh, fat men. So <laughs> I was like, how are we going to wear this here? <laughs> anyway. Shabby. <laughs> the thing with, yeah, that's my, that's my Rooster Teeth sponsorship for the week, <laughs> uh, except for I paid for the hoodie. Um, the thing with the MPC thing. So I bet it gets old. Like, there's probably only 25... Roughly, variations. like variations. Yeah. So at some point, you'll be bound to run into like a, oh, 
this is another financial accountant at like some other thing. Like they, mm-hmm. th- there's just there's only so many classes they probably have. That being said, there's also I'm sure you've seen a lot of crazy stuff you can do with AI, uh, auto planning faces now and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So there's also a chance that they just let machine learning kind of take over in order to create all these varying yeah. NPCs. I'm I'm of the two of the but two how do you write things. the story? Yeah, that's my. It's hard for me to believe that someone has figured out how to use machine learning and, and AI algorithm stuff to that point. This, but to the amount of that potentially, yeah. but they could at least use it to make more random. So rather than twenty five hard coded ones from the mm-hmm. their own creators, they could have let it go to like one hundred and fifty. Yeah, and then still, you know. Take 150 and multiply each of those by three to populate the cities. So you're still over 500 people. But the other thing, um, I didn't have it in here, uh, but Jason Schreier tweeted out some additional information where he's he heard that depending on what like MPC or whatever that you will play as or are playing as right. can change the the game and story and like options for things and stuff like that, which it, the entire thing is super ambitious. If this is all true. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Like I'm almost of the mind that it's going to be like a named NPC situation where like, there's a pool of people that you can play as. And then there's a, there's like the, the peons and peasants that you don't really interact with. At all. Well, my thought would be like a character. If it's, cast. If it's, if it's post, Watch Dogs 2. I wouldn't... You wouldn't be hard-pressed to find robots. Mm-hmm. Like cyber bots that you can also take over, which allows you... You're not just becoming the person. You're hacking the person, and that's how you're taking them over. Yeah. So it's like a... It's like, yeah, you're allowed to play as MP, any NPC, you think but it's you're just like a, hacking the chip that's in their brain. I was going to say, you think it's like a cyborg thing where like we have phones implanted inside of our Potentially. Head? Potentially. Uh, that mixed with, I could see it being like, to go back to Watch Dogs 2, I could go to Watch Dogs 1 with it, but 2 is just more recent. So you're Marcus, right? And you're on a mission and you have to get past these security guards, but there's nothing really around you you can hack. So you can quick jump to like an NPC that's just walking on the street, walk up and use some type of distraction method, whether it's a hooker and she just tries to lure away a guard or gets arrested for doing, you know, something to lure those guards away because that's your only way into the building. Like, using them to affect a mission and Mm. completely change outcomes, but to not actually impact the main story, just how you accomplish the mission. Interesting. But we'll see. I I mean, I also was of the mind uh, weeks ago when you said Watch Dogs 3, and I said it's too early. So... I've I've been wrong on one E3 call that's not on the official prediction show, so I don't get a negative point. <laughs> <laughs> after after today, I was like, "Fuck, I don't have any." Like that's yeah. our, that's where yeah, we're our at. next episode is going to be real boring, folks. So uh, if you skip it, I will kill you. <laughs> I mean, the good news is it might actually be short for once. The good news is it still won't be because I talk too much. Uh, so next we have Ninja Theory has their new game leaked. Ninja uh, Theory, which was one of my predictions. Fucking dicks. Uh, <laughs> we should just do our predictions <laughs> in like March. Yeah, uh, it'll be called. If I should say with a caveat, if the rumors are true, uh, it'll be called Bleeding Edge, and it is a four v four online melee combat game where all you can do is hear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Which is, yeah, it's funny because I mean Ninja Theory's done other stuff, obviously, yeah. than Hellblade. Would not um, have pegged them for that, but that's that will surprise a lot of people that only knew them from Hellblade. If and if they liked, like, oh man, I really like this game. I can't wait to see what these guys do next. And they're like, what about a four v four combat? And they're like, wait, what the fuck? So we'll see. It'll be interesting yeah. if if that's true. Uh, Amazon leaked two games from THQ Nordic. A reboot of Destroy All Humans and Darksider Genesis. Both interesting because that means it's two of the 80 some odd games that THQ Nordic says it has in development. When are they going to do a conference? Next year? Um, I don't know. I don't think they ever will. I think they'll just keep dumping up into other people's conferences. It'll be like the, they're going to, they're fully embracing the. Middle mid tier publisher. They're fully embracing THQ Nordic. Yeah, <laughs> they're embracing themselves. We Their know heritage. We know what we are. We will not sway from this path. 
Uh, Rocksteady won't be at E3 this year, according to co-founder Sefton Hill. Via Twitter, he said, quote, We'll be watching as fans, but remaining in London, hard at work on the next big project. End quote. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, this. The How long talk have they is, been? The talk is it's still potentially Batman Court of Owls or whatever that game was that we talked about a while ago. Mm. That How, owl. If they're making another like Batman Red game, like. Well, the rumors were for the longest time they're supposed to be making the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, or a Superman game, or something else in the DC universe. <laughs> Not that. TMNT is in the, super, in the DC universe, but I mean... It could be. It showed up in Nether Realms, uh, Injustice, so I guess technically they're canon now. So Disney, Disney's going to buy them next month anyways. Um, Rocksteady? No, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh. And DC. Yeah, and DC. For- I mean, they might buy Rocksteady. I don't fucking know. <laughs> they, can, <laughs> they have the money. <laughs> like, Yeah, they, they could just buy yeah, everything. That'd, that'd be like a pocket change to them. Uh, let's see here. It may be the year of games without in the title. That's out. O U T. Uh, out, out, I almost said, Outriders Awaken from Square Enix was teased with further details coming at their conference. I don't know. Do you have anything to care about that? No, I, I, I don't care about the game. I just put it in there and I I don't know if you deleted it or left it. No, it just says bad joke. Shut up. Yeah, it's a bad, it's a bad joke, Nate. Shut up. Uh, it could be true, though. There's there's at least three games, one that's currently out, and two that are on their way that have out in the okay. title. So Nate's saying it's the year of the out, and I'm saying it's the <laughs> the year of floating ominous people? floating black figures. <laughs> oh, um, I like that those are our two predictions. Like the year of the crossbow, man. That was a good yeah. year. Year of the tomahawk, also a fun year. We need a year of the trebuchet. Ooh, man. Can you imagine what that would be, though? The year of the trebuchet? Well, how many games would be the we same? We need, like, the Kerbal <laughs> Space Station, but for trebuchets. Uh, uh, total, totally accurate battle, battleground simulator. Okay. It's basically that, but I can't remember if they have catapults or trebuchets. They better have trebuchets. Probably it's a superior both, siege weapon. As we all know. And a good siege tower. You always need one of those. Battering ram every now and then. Yep. Just attach it to the front of the trebuchet, honestly. No, yeah, why not? Run out of rocks and just go <laughs> at it. Uh, let's see here. Where are we? <laughs> According to some rumors, Halo Infinite will be at E3. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> no surprise there. <laughs> but it will be shown on a PC. Running on PC. I'm still not surprised. Uh, rumors suggest that the developers are afraid that the current Xbox One hardware wouldn't do it justice. Just do it, yeah. Wouldn't do it justice. I can talk. Are we are we surprised by any of that statement? Um, how many how many times do we think that people have lied to us anyway and not actually played stuff on the gen's hardware that they're doing it on? That's true, but like from, we've known that, and we've also known they've done scripted events where they haven't actually played it in front of us either. What the what the tone of this makes me feel like they're gonna make it obvious that it's on PC. Like they're almost gonna you keyboard know keyboard and mouse uh, controls on the screen. Yeah, or something like, like to that effect. You're running and it shows that your grenades are attached to G instead of right bumper. Because like... Because I feel like that's the only way they can actually do that. <laughs> I feel like... Or they put a giant... If they did P- do that, like C. the PC community would like lose their shit. Or they like didn't show keybinds at all and they just put up a giant two PC in the middle <laughs> of an overlay just on top of the game the entire time. <laughs> hey, dicks, this is on PC. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Pump, pump to see what it is, though. And if it's if that's the case, if they're worried that the current Xbox architecture is going to do it, and which means if they're saying that they're worried that the Xbox One X can't run it, that's what I was thinking as well. So we're seeing that in the next gen, not this gen. Yeah. If which, that's if that's an actual concern of them, the rumors, um, the rumor mill uh, also surmised the same thing. So I'm part of the rumor mill. Then, hey, yeah. what's up, me? Uh, it's also the problem that if uh, at, we've also seen this a ton too, stuff demos higher than its release. Yeah, like the so fidelity. they can be worried that it's not going to show that well, but it also might release worse than what they show. That's the part that everybody forgets. The, the Look at how many puddles part, there are. Look how many less puddles there are. <laughs> like, the confusing part for me, though, is if you look at that stupid little teaser they showed where they were basically showing you the art direction that it was taking. Yeah, they just it show wasn't, you a halo. 
Yeah, it wasn't well with you know Master Chief standing there or whatever. Uh, that, with a Spartan standing there, Matthew. It wasn't like let's not go running around saying he's in Mark Mark armor. All right. It didn't look hyper realistic. No, it didn't look hyper realistic. But that was also a year ago, yeah. and it was almost a still at that point. Yeah. Come on. Uh, Nintendo got ahead of E3 and announced the new ukulele game called Ukulele and the Impossible Lair, a game that combines 2D platforming and 3D exploration, coming to Switch in 2019, but no specific date as of now. That one showed up late, and I just threw it in uh, because I did not think Ukulele was going to get a second game because it did not sell well. And it was not received amazingly well either. I don't know. But it pulled the second game, so... And I mean, I guess it pulled the second game, and it's going to the Switch, so it might have... Nintendo might have looked at it and said, that's great for our audience. Mm-hmm. I, don't think it, I don't think it did well on every other console, including PC. I know it didn't do well. This whole week, uh, uh, PlayStation's been... I don't know if you've noticed, uh, if you follow them on YouTube, but they've been announcing like indie games and stuff like that the whole it's, week through. It's what... We talked about it when they said they weren't doing E3. Yeah. Uh, it's what we expect them to do. They're going to constantly do still updates and stuff. They're not going to do a press conference, but they are going to get themselves mentioned this week. Yeah, and which we'll will, talk about, actually. It will be something. There, I, I predict a Sony announcement enough to make headlines within the next seven days. What if right before Xbox's... Pre- no, they wouldn't do that. The to- PS5 is out now. <laughs> No, I was going to say, what if right before the Xbox press conference, they're like, the Sony event will be... Oh, no, they, I don't think they would drop a conference, but I could definitely see them right now. Like, like, they could they could fuck with Xbox enough to go right before this. You guys want to see some Last of Us 2? Boom. Drop that. Drop release date. Drop PS5 announce date. And drop all of that in like a 30-minute window right before Xbox. That'd be so rude. Why well, you guys got to do this to me, man? It'd be so rude, especially since they're like trying to be nice to each other. We're supposed to be. <laughs> you were made to destroy the Sith, not join, join them. them. <laughs> oh, shit. Prequel memes, man. All right. Number five. My biggest one of the week. Personally. That's what she said. Think about it. <laughs> I am. I've just never heard it. So, number five. There was an even bigger Direct this week from Nintendo that focused solely on the upcoming Pokemon games, Sword and Shield. There's literally so much that they showed, I'm only going to be discussing some highlights. And any more that you would like to know or see, I suggest you look up, especially when I start mentioning some of these Pokemon. You should take a look at some of them cute little (laughs) faces. And here we go. What do you mean the ships didn't blow up? All right, here we go. (laughs) Tell Someday. me what movie that's from. Uh, Someday. <laughs> hey, did you see the new the new uh, picture of Robert Pattinson Batman? No. Is they, there actually a pic? Is there actually a picture or is it a fan picture? It's from the director, but I don't think it's either. I'm not. I'm not sure if it's like a costume test or if it's just almost like a art, like a here's what we think art. you could look like is Batman. But it's Batman, but with the white eyes. Oh, like uh, cartoon style Batman. Yeah. Okay. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Not just like, you know, white contacts and like a psychopath. Anyway, back to Pokemon. Here we go. New Pokemon were shown off, and they include Wooloo, who is a sheep Pokemon. Woo. <laughs> I really hope. I. So we all know that Pikachu's big thing is just to say Pika. They all kind of say some grunt or their names or whatever. I really want Wooloo's sound to just be Wooloo. And that's it the entire time. And then when you get to the form that I'm going to talk about later, it's like, ooh, the, oh, <laughs> it's just some real deep craziness. Gossifleur, which is a flower Pokemon. Eldegoss, which is a cotton bloom Pokemon that has evolved from Gossifleur. Dreadnaw, which is a biting Pokemon. And Corviknight, which seems to be the new flying service between towns and is a giant black metal looking bird. Out of all uh, of those, Matt, for can your... Can you please say the name again for me? Because I didn't hear that. <laughs> at oh, the yeah. end. Corvin Knight. 
<laughs> if uh, if you had to pick one, Matt, out of everything I just mentioned, which one are you going with? You saw them all. Um, are we talking about the starter ones? Nope. These are the the other ones. Not Piplup, Score Bunny, or uh, not Piplup. Piplup's a fucking I mean, old generation. Sobble, Score Bunny, and if I had to Skeeter, pick one, I'd go with the... Wooloo. Of course, all right, good man. Wooloo. <laughs> Stadion Wulu brought to you by <laughs> Gamers 2. Uh, anyway, the Stadia. Wi- Stadia. Wulu. <laughs> the wild area is the space between cities. The Pokemon that spawn there can be dependent on where you are and the weather. While in the wild area, you can move the camera in any direction and fish slash search for things. The camera thing's big because you've never been able to just like pan around. Yeah. And, uh, and a Pokemon one. Is it really going to like help you do anything? My guess is because they mentioned like searching for stuff. So my guess is you'll probably be able to use it to like look around to find like hidden entrances to like weird stuff or whatever. Like, oh, there's this really rare Pokemon that spawns over here. If you can find the entrance to this cave by lining up the sun with the seven chakra, the, you know, dumb shit like that. Solve this QR code by looking at two buildings with the right angle and then. Uh, there is also a new mechanic named Dynamax. Not Duralast, not Duramax, not Jim Connor or anything else that Nate has screwed it up with, but Dynamax. Dynamax makes your Pokemon giant for special battles and boosts their power as well. It can be used once per battle and only lasts for three turns. In the wild area, you can connect either online or local, with other players to take on max raid battles to fight wild Dynamax Pokemon. If you win, you have a chance to capture the giant Pokemon. And gym leaders also have Dynamax Pokemon. Uh, the two legendary Pokemon are Zacian, 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 Zacian. I think you had it right the first time. All right, no? whatever I said, you guys figure it out. It's Z-A-C-I-N. And Zamazenta. The sword and the shield. Matt got really disappointed for some reason that he had to carry around a sword the entire time. And then I just reminded him it's a dog with a stick. It's true. It's very true. Well, now I feel bad that the other dog doesn't have one. He has a giant shame collar. Maybe they're always fighting over... Yeah, he's wearing the cone of shame. Yeah. Maybe they're always fighting over the stick. <laughs> <laughs> they just swap back and forth every now and then. <laughs> there are many sticks like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> The game releases on November 15th, 2019, while two separate copies will be sold like all Pokemon games. This time they are giving you the option to buy them in a double pack if for some reason you can't make up your mind about which legendary dog you like more. (laughs) And I know people that are going to do it. That's terrible. Uh, Can't you just trade them? Yeah, to complete your Pokedex. Otherwise you need to find somebody that's going to get rid of the game and try to steal all their Pokemon and then just let them sell the game, but... This seems like a fucking obvious uh, scam. Like, they're like, oh, you got to get both of them if you want. We've been, we've been doing it for years. Wow, Nintendo. It'll, Nintendo, it'll, Nintendo. Nintendo gets away with so much shit that other people would, like, get pissed about. It'll it be a bigger company. thing when uh, Pokemon Bank is actually out, the online cloud storage service. Because mm-hmm. then you can just start swapping and completing everything and just moving yeah. all your Pokemon around to... It won't be, like, as... He won't complain as much because you'll just have one. If they consider that to be the end all be all, your Pokedex situation, you just move stuff around with your friends to complete everything. And yeah, it's gonna be that's gonna be a race to who's the first one done. It will be a hundred percent race, and somebody in China, China or Asia. I was gonna it, say it's like some Korean or some Chinese person. Yeah, Asia win. will win it because they have certain uh, like exclusive Pokemon. Anyway, my final point on the Nintendo Direct was Leon looks dumb and uh, Sonya looks cool. What if it turns out that Sonya and Leon are, like, dating? I'll be so disappointed in Sonya. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like I'm disappointed in a fucking anime character, but at the same time, like, I mean, look, at Leon. Look, at, look at Leon. Look at Leon. No one should make that choice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find do you a think, hat like that. Why do you think he's undefeated in Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> you're the Chad. I was going to be it so that he, you, he, you can beat him. No, you're the Chad in the story. 
I also love, yeah, his entire story arc. He's loved by everybody in the area and his impressive competitive streak of unbeaten. And you're like, well, I don't know how this story ends. It's with me defeating the only guy that's never been beaten. And, oh, guess what? Now I'm the greatest ever. Why did you tell me he's unbeaten? See, I'm, no, this I'm is like, what's going to happen. I'm annoyed you told me he's it's unbeaten. A, it's, a, it's a plot twist because you, his younger brother, who's also... Who's your rival. Who is your rival. So... You are going to develop with the younger brother. Right, as always. The younger brother is going to defeat the older brother. Oh. And then you have to defeat the younger brother. That would be different. It still means the undefeated guy got defeated. Yeah. I mean, it's still going to happen. Regardless. Yeah. It has to happen. I, th- I think people would be more pissed if you're not the one to do it. I'm more pissed they just told me he's undefeated. Yeah. Don't tell me that. I don't care if he lost a bunch on his way or if he's undefeated, really, because I know how the games always end. I win. What Pokemon game have I ever lost? They could come up with like a co-op feature here, like where you can just like putz around and catch Pokemon with your friends and not have to raid battle. Is that a thing? Does that exist outside of Pokemon Go? Uh, well, even Pokemon Go, it's just like you're physically walking with someone. Yeah, it doesn't. No, because Let's Go is done poorly and it's co-op. So yeah, if uh, that'd be cool if you could just join. Like if you could have a private wild area, air quotes private, mm-hmm. and like have a code that had access to your wild area. Your wild. Come on, Matt. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just so distracted. You stretch it with it. That's what she said before, and then I give I you a, your wild area. All right, you know what? Fucking go for the next one, man. It's all you. Do you want to? You want the new games that have been leaked? Games? There's plural? Three of them. Holy shit. They're all Bandai Namco games. Oh, well, all right. It's... All right, we'll run through them real quick. Just titles. Um, they're, they're sure. I'll do I'll do title. Well, it's a new... The Tales of, of Arise, that thing, which apparently that's a JRPG series that has been long running. Yeah, except... What is it? Tales of... Of Arise? Just Arise? Yeah. Tales of Arise. It must be after Bazeria and all those ones. I figured it would end in like Eria because all the ones are, other ones are like Zillia or Bazeria or Gahinabidia. And then a remaster of uh, Nino Kuni, the first one. That's interesting. And then the third one is Elden Ring, which is the George R. R. Martin game. Oh, yeah. The one that he's uh, writing instead of writing the books. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. Get it, George. You and they were all leaked via Bandai Namco's website because they did not that because of a security flaw. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, number six. If I was going to do a security flaw, I would just purposely put giant red flags up, like horribly fake things. Yeah, like I'm remastering all of Metal Gears. Hmm. Good luck proving that one. <laughs> Oh Jesus! Just have a have a DMZ where there's just a bunch of garbage leaks that no one would ever notice. That's what see these these companies need to step up their game, man. Yeah, they need to start throwing some some uh, red herrings in there. Like Microsoft stuff. should just throw out that Halo Infinite is a battle royale. Yeah, and just let somebody leak it, and then them go like, "Gotcha." Yeah, not even close. That'd be fantastic. It's actually an RTS. <laughs> Halo Infinite is Halo I'm Wars just, three. Can I just say one of my one of my E three predictions? It's Halo like, Wars oh. three. No, I was like they're gonna do a Gears RTS game, and then, and then like I was thinking about it, and I and then I looked it up, and I'm like, oh wait, they did they did do one. Yeah, we, we joked. Tactic. We joked about it because they announced three gear things. They announced that they announced that cheeky yeah. thing for Gears, and they announced the actual Gears. Mm-hmm. Because I said, what if they did it? I think we talked about it last. Oh year. Like, yeah, what if the they did... cheesy thing isn't that the the weird like anime thing? The chibi thing is like them. The is, chibi is yeah. like Funko Pops. Yeah. Because I think it's with Funko. It's fucking weird, man. Oh, my God. All right. Can't wait to see all that again this year. Uh, number six, Sega Genesis Mini is available for pre-order $80. Uh, is that, that different than the other ones that have already been out, Matt? Which other ones? I don't know. Don't we usually get the Segas and Ataris and the, this like, one's... The $30 ones? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's... It's me just saying it's different than those ones. Yes. That's all. Sorry. I don't do mind catch me. On. A little don't slow. Me, a little slow uh, tonight for me. Um, <laughs> hey, that's what. Uh, that's not a terrible price, considering the console will be shipping with forty-two games. But are they forty-two good games, Matt? 
I mean, I could tell you some of the games on the list. I'm not gonna go through all of them because fuck that noise. Did you have a Genesis? Yes. Okay, so tell me some if there's some games on there you like. Is that Dolphin I mean, game on there? Oh hell yeah, Echo the Dolphin is on there. Echo the Dolphin is the only game I know for Genesis. I think <laughs> basically because it's a joke, not an actual joke, <laughs> but mean, like it's it, a meme. Echo yeah, the Dolphin yeah. is a meme. I, it is meme. So, well, there's Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, Tetris. Oh, that'll be great. Great movie um, release. Uh, where it was Kid Chameleon? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's see here. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, <laughs> Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim 2. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. That's just Sonic again. That's true. Well, I'm not going to, I'm just going to go through the ones that people how many definitely t- how know. How many aren't Sonic? There's a better question. Out of 42 of them, how many aren't Well, everyone Sonic? I just said is all the, all the Sonic ones. Oh, all right then. Um, just kidding. There's Sonic the Hedgehog spin Come ball. on. <laughs> uh, Ghouls and Ghosts. I don't even know what that is. Mega Man, The Wily Wars. Oh, yeah. That's right. Mega Man. Street Fighter 2, Special Champion Edition. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Street Fighter. Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse. Huh? Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Shinobi 3. Um, Contra Hardcore. Let me get out of here, Goofy. There's a, yeah, that, you get the idea. Those games. Cool. Are you going to get one? I'm on the fence. Seeing how we don't buy mini classic consoles. Because we skipped every other one so far. My nostalgia is telling me to get it and play it. My mind's telling me no. My <laughs> mind is telling me it's going to turn out to be a complete waste of money. Because I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to start playing the games. And I'm going to be like, wow, these look like garbage. Wow, these games do not play as I remember. And then I'll never turn it on again. My mind's telling me no, but my nostalgia, my nostalgia's telling me yes. Number seven, Xbox is launching a line of body wash and deodorant and other grooming products. The description reads, quote, a fresh scent of pulsing green citrus. Who would have thought it would be green, right? Featuring top notes of kefir lime and winter lemon, aromatic herbal middle notes of mint and sage, and woody bottom patch. Woody, wait, woody bottom notes of patchouli and clear wood, end quote. And now for Nate's version of it. It's time to smell like a 2007 gym locker room with axe, but memes and depression scented. Uh. The products are only available in Australia and New Zealand with no word if they'll be in any other countries. Interesting. Yes. Weird. That's like a that's stocking weird stuff. stuff. It's a, that's a stocking stuff for like Christmas thing. Like I expect to see that on a gift box and cap at Target. Yeah. Yeah. As a joke. Mm-hmm. Agreed. In HBA, not electronics. Yeah. And not in the men's section where we do weird box stuff as well. Maybe in the boys' section as like a joke. And yet that we'd sell out of them. <laughs> That's what I was going to That's say. the more disappointing thing is we'd sell out of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, number eight. IKEA has partnered with a medical wearables company to create some prototype accessories for gamers. Uh, using predominantly 3D printing, IKEA has made accessories like textured keycaps, a mouse bungee, and a biometric wrist support. Um, the wrist support in particular was interesting because you use the app that IKEA made with this medical company that I can't recall the name of to scan your wrist, and then they print and send you a wrist support that's specifically for your wrist. That is interesting. Um, Can the, I? Never mind. The products are only available through that app, that IKEA partnership app, with whatever the hell the medical company is called. Um, I don't know why IKEA hasn't thought of making things specifically for gamers before, because obviously, it's their biggest market. Well, it is. Sorry, no, it's not. It has potential to be their biggest market. They, we as a people. Love their furniture because it's cheap and it works really well for holding computers. It holds stuff really good. Signed off, gamers too. <laughs> Seal of approval. Yeah. IKEA desk holds good stuff. Good. Hold good stuff. Good. Good stuff. Oh, sorry, you're right. It should be more. Uh, gamers two seal of approval for IKEA. Solid. End quote. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thanks for coming. Oh, shizzle. 
Oh, it's me, isn't it? I got you. It is. Unless Number... you just you know, want to call it quits. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just, you know, uh, I'm just done with this whole podcast as a thing. This is our final episode. We'll talk to you guys later. I'm just going to cancel all our services. And... <laughs> Bye. It's been fun. We're almost to 100, so it's the best time to quit. <laughs> quit on the top. Cool, you're on top, not at the bottom, which is where we actually are. The CEO <laughs> of PlayStation, Jim Ryan, got around this week. Number 10. <laughs> <laughs> he did an interve- interview with CNET that was fairly normal other than one fun response when asked if the next generation of consoles would be the last he responded quote I just don't know and if I did know I wouldn't tell you end quote I mean makes sense yeah it does another response that's interesting is a little lengthy but we'll take a look at part of it Quote, when you've got these big, very large companies coming into your space, I think simply viewing the world in the terms you viewed it in in the last, er, sorry, in the past 25 years with the competition you've had over the past 25 years is probably not a very sensible approach to take. We, through our actions and recent announcements, believe that there is a great market for next generation console. End quote. And this just now confirms what our friend theorized to Nate while he was visiting PAX East. Yes. Yes. That Microsoft and Sony are going to band together to give Google the middle finger. Yes. And Nintendo will be there as, like, the small child behind the parents. (laughs) I was just thinking, don't you talk to me or my son ever again. (laughs) Yeah. It's like Microsoft standing there, and then just PlayStation's kind of like off to the side as like the uncle that's not supposed to be there, but he is. Yeah. He's just as supportive as of his sister. But uh, over at TechSpot, he spilled a few more details about the PS5. According to Ryan, PS5 will support backwards compatibility with PS4 games, which we knew before, along with what they call cross generational play. The PS5 will support 8K, which who fucking cares, and 4K at 120 hertz. Yeah. Even after Apple's giant joke of a fucking press conference, they only announced a 6K monitor. So suck it. Suck it. Yeah, that seems a little, I guess, future proofing. Hey, no. We went from 5K monitors to 6K monitors. Where are we actually going to go from 4K to 8K? They're not wrong. We double, as is that. Lo- Do we need 8K? What's that principle? There's a, it's a known, like, tech law. Yeah, every, every six months. It's processor doubled. power doubles. Yeah. yeah, it's um. And I don't think that goes with the resolution, but I mean, yeah. What the fuck is that's gonna bother me? Yeah, because there's been talk of the past couple of years it's of not it. being true yeah. anymore. Ooh. Dude, Ooh. take your Ooh. fucking side by side. That would be a. I think that was a dirt bike. All right. So if you heard that, <laughs> so because you heard that, I'm gonna apologize. I'm also going to wonder when the cops show up. Because uh, it probably won't be too long. Lovely. I hope he crashes. I'll say it. <laughs> Good luck with whatever tree you come across. Dumbass. The 4K 120 hertz thing is interesting, too, because most TVs can't do 120 at the moment because of the limitations of HDMI. Some of them can't, but at the same time, some of them do. I mean, you see the clear motion rates of 240 hertz from Samsung, which we know is actually 120. And other ones tout 120s as well. Mm -hmm. But that's at at 1080p. Right, that's at 1080p, not 4K. Um, Although... It's it's weird because like it's, the ones that are coming out right or are out right now for the most part have at least one port that's. Uh, it's supposed to be the better, yeah, yeah. HDMI three, I think, or four, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Versus twos on. and ones. There's actual classifications of uh, same way. There's USB three and two. It's the same thing with HDMI's. All right, now we're done with uh, video game stuff. We're into entertainment. welcome to the sports podcast. Oh, damn it. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is partnering with Netflix to create a Magic the Gathering TV series. Joe and Anthony Russo of Avenger Endgame fame, among other stuff, are the ones heading the project. Uh, the show will focus on the game's magic-wielding planeswalkers. That means nothing to me. Does that mean anything to you? Uh, they're just like the actual characters in the universe. They're okay. like the main... They're like faction representatives. And then everybody else is a bunch of minions. Ah... Uh, Okay. If if that makes sense. It does. That does make sense. I don't have I couldn't explain it to you any 
potentially better than that because I just put the cards on the table and I hit things. So I pick things up, I put them down. I put them up and I put them down. There are small pieces of paper and I am phoning the cops. This has been so and so, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. Number eleven. I don't. Know, I, I don't. I don't. I didn't want to say Tom Brokaw, but I couldn't think of who I was actually trying to. This has been. What's the bird? I don't remember anymore. Ignore me. Ignore me, folks. Number eleven. Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference has come and gone, but we did get at least one entertaining product announcement, and I don't believe that for a second. There's no easy way to say this. Actually, no. <laughs> let, me, let me correct that. There's a really fucking easy way to say <laughs> this, because this is a giant joke. Apple is launching a $1,000 monitor stand. Okay, now that you're done laughing, I'll, I'll continue. Uh, you would think that there would be some special sauce to justify the price, but there isn't. <gasps> Wait, Matt, could it be that there's a Apple like logo on it? And that means metal well, I mean, equals a thousand dollars. I guess that's the special sauce. Are you making changes to this damn thing? Well, I'm. I was going it? to, but that's all right. You'll fix it. I know. <laughs> <sighs> the monitor has a magnetic quick detach system. That was the change. The monitor stand. I live change with you uh, on my phone. Uh, okay, because I didn't change it. Yeah, it. I meant to. It's supposed to say the monitor stand, not the monitor, because there's no monitor. Oh, the monitor stand. There you go. Has a magnetic quick detach system. Interesting. Magnets are interesting. Although I'm not sure why you would want that for a monitor, as I also agree. The degrees of movement aren't as good as a Dell monitor. Well, that's not a good start. Uh, Dell monitor stand. Not to mention the popular monitor arms that are a fraction of the price. Finally, to wrap it up, the stand isn't Visa compliant. Are you fucking kidding me? And that's a $200 accessory. Yeah. So a Visa compliant... It's a $200 accessory. We know Apple does dumb shit where they make it all proprietary anyway, so I'm sure it works with the IMAX. But this is this is a solid joke. <laughs> it's almost... I wish it was a bad April Fool's joke. Like, it's just a few months late because it'd be really good for that. Uh, and at the same time, why would you... Who buys just a monitor stand? Did I fucking forget something? <laughs> the, only, the only time that I buy a monitor stand is if I'm buying arms. Yeah. I'm not buying a fucking doorstop, which also was the greatest picture I saw after this conference and all these jokes. People using IMAX for doorstops. <laughs> My favorite thing. They work really good. I'm, I'm just saying. It reminds me of the skit. The... Yeah, the Iraq. Yeah, the Iraq. The Iraq and the eye toaster. I think I should put more things into the Iraq. I'm just going to throw money at it now. No, take things out of the Iraq. No, they want to be there. The Iraq is becoming unstable. And I will solve that by putting more things in the Iraq. Uh, (laughs) Mad TV, circa 2005, people. Go take a look. uh, (laughs) All right, last thing up. Not really too crazy. Apparently, the Uncharted movie is still happening. uh, And the Hollywood Reporter has reported... That it will be releasing <laughs> on December 18th, 2020. Uh, Tom Holland is playing Nathan Drake. Really? Yes. Huh. I'm assuming some sort of young Nathan Drake, obviously. I'm assuming Philly and just didn't want the job. Or they're too stupid to ask him. <clears throat> too old, unfortunately, I think. Still weirdly looks exactly like him. Yeah, Man, who'd is. have thought? Who does Tom Holland look like? Nobody in that universe. Weird. Tom Holland is Sully. What? No. <laughs> uh, and then they, they did finally release, so I will tell you, the Twitch Prime. Oh, shit. It's June, what, 7th? Never mind. All right. New Humble Bundle Monthly isn't up yet. Just yet, folks. Just yet. It will be next week, though. Anyway, Twitch Prime deals for June. Aegis Defenders, Stick Bold, 10 Second Ninja X, and Metronomicon. Boom. We done. We got it. Decently long episode. I oh, bet. It, it's actually, we're, we're like an hour and a half. We're not too bad. Uh, but that's it. That's where we're at. Are you ready now to take the journey 
to our E3 prediction show? I'm not, no. You, the listener, you better be, because it's going to get wild. It's going to get scary. It's going to be a lot of Matt and Nate complaining that things are already out, <laughs> and we can't think of anything to predict. But at the same time, Nate will bury himself again by making 18,000 predictions on one title and being wrong on 17,999 of them, therefore sinking his potential score points to negative 17,999. I'm just going to make broad sweeping statements. and Matt will say FIFA will come out this year, and he will gain a point. Nate will say FIFA will come out this year, but also have baseball in it and lose a point. That is how this show goes. Be ready for it. See ya. Bye.